presented by Motorola. And I'm Colleen Wolf alongside Ike Taylor, Michael Robinson, Boom. Mike Garofolo. It's a brand new fearsome foursome. Huh? I love I'm it. I'm trying I that out. It. Tried it on. Oh, okay, yes. nice. I Got like it. it. All right. He nothing nothing yeah. from you, <laughs> Garofolo. <laughs> fine. Fantastic four. How about that? Okay, okay. that works. If I'm stealing names. Reach across yeah. the table. But I, I, can, I'm <laughs> I got alligator arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> we want you guys to join in the party here at home. You can tweet us just using the hashtag GMFB. Of course, it is Saturday, and teams are going through their walkthroughs. We're going to do the same thing. It's time for the walkthrough presented by Motorola. First up, the 5-0 and Chiefs trying to keep it that way when they host the Steelers. Now, Alex Smith, he has the highest passer rating in the league. Big Ben, he has more interceptions than touchdowns right now coming off that five-pick game. too loud. <laughs> well, look, uh, Big Ben, he was questioning himself, and then he said that he never questions himself. So is he going to bounce back this week? Yeah, I think he's going to bounce back. I don't think he's going to have the game he had last week. Of course, I think he's going to bounce back. If it's, any, if it's any other Mark's week Peters that he needs side. to bounce back, to show people he mm -hmm. still can play, it's going to be this week because they play in the Kansas City Chiefs. And we know in KC, man, that defense is always a lot. Justin of Houston. Hits. Always. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What about this one? Week six, we got the Patriots and the Jets for first place. For first in the place division. in the NFC. All right, all right, all right. The Jets. Yes. The, yes. the highest Jets. Field, Jets. Listen. It's listen. the Coney Ely revenge game. It is the Coney Ely. Way to get that line in. I know, there, I know. I know I you really, wrote it and you wanted to it was, say it. It was tough. <laughs> but I'm Our producer say stole it before the show. That I'm somewhere between. You know, I'm not a Jets hater, but I didn't expect them to win 10 games. We'll talk about that Basically, later. You're a Jets yeah. hater. But I yes, thought that they are. were going to. But this is the game, Jets. You can make me a believer. You can make everybody a believer. Not a lot of people believing right now. We shall see. For first place For in the AFC East. Oh, yes. I'm not buying it. Not buying it. Must How be about early in the year. Right. Must be early. Matthew right. Stafford and Drew Brees, they've combined for 17 touchdowns, one interception. That one interception, of course, from Matt Stafford because the Saints have no giveaways yet this season. But both teams, they have problems. Uh, so, Mike, Rob, what are you watching for here? Oh, man, I'm, I'm looking at, first of all, both of these quarterbacks have great arms. Both of these quarterbacks have great arms talent, but I'm looking at which one of these defenses can stop one of these quarterbacks. You look at both of these pass defenses, Detroit being 27, the Saints being 28. Which defense is going to give up the most yards? I'm going to be looking strictly on the defensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. Matt Stafford, a little hobbled to this week. We'll see how that affects the game. Hurt. How about this one? The second scoring offense taking on the second scoring defense. It's the Rams and the Jags. That's what a is good going game. on right now? That's going to be a good game. Well, I'm telling you, man. Yeah, they're both three and two, and they're featuring two of the top three rushers good, in the league. Todd good Gurley. Defensive line yes, play too. Yes. yes, and Leonard yeah. Fournette. I, right I want to know about him. Hit that fantasy Leonard. bell if you think Fournette's going to ball again this week. Yeah, I think, yeah. think he's going to ball. I mean, obviously he's a New Orleans boy, so I'm going to be biased for my New Orleans boy. Man, look at that boy. But at the same time, time he's a grown like man when he's running the rock. If you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, they're going back to old school Fred T. Uh, Waving Mike Jones, Mitchell over. Or, or, or they just don't have to Greg quarterback Jones. the ball. Or the quarterback. Or the, that's they don't hide that quarterback things. throwing the ball too much. But then on the flip side, you got the L.A. Rams talking about Ty Gurley and the impact he's had mm -hmm. this year. Baller. Coming out the backfield looking like a little Le'Veon, and he's running the ball real well. I like I like what Sean McVay is doing over there. Back in the yeah. spring, Doug Marone was asked, "What's the ideal number of rushes? I'm sorry, for passes for Blake Bortles during the game?" He said zero. There was a Ooh. drive last week where they actually ran the ball all the way down the field. They're loving life with Leonard Fournette. Walk through. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. All right. All right. All right. Well, hey, look, this is a team that does not have a problem at quarterback. The Packers. They're taking on the Vikings. Aaron Rodgers has to deal with a defense that gives up the fewest big plays in the league. So, Mike Rob. Can the Packers finally protect Aaron Rodgers? Oh, uh, you know what, Colleen? I don't know. Uh, That's a big question. Yeah. Uh, on tape, they haven't been protecting him. Look, Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League. But that guy right there, Everson Griffin, he's going to be all over Aaron Rodgers today. If they don't get the blocking unit uh, solidified, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about it a little bit later. That's Five. a been known break defense with Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Everson Griffin, Daniel yeah, Hunter, they're balling right now. I like them safeties. Let's talk a little bit more about this matchup because we have Tom Pelissero live in Minneapolis where the Vikings are without a handful of starters, including their quarterback, Tom. Yeah, Colleen, this is not how the Vikings expected their offense to look for their first game against the Packers. No Sam Bradford, no Dalvin Cook, of course, and no Stephon Diggs, who is out with a groin injury. Really, this is where the Vikings defense needs to earn its money. Remember, they paid a bunch of their own guys on second contracts over the past year, and the Vikings have been really pleased that all those guys 
have taken their game to the next level. Nobody has done that more than defensive end Everson Griffin, who already had six sacks through five games, and to quote one Vikings team source, is playing out of his mind right now. I talked to Griffin this week and asked him, when the Vikings have had success in the past, keeping Rodgers from wrecking the game, what have they done well? He said, our coaches always give us a good plan for how we're going to get to him, and we need to stick to that plan, rush him together as a group. In other words, don't let Rodgers get outside the pocket. Don't let him change the angles. Don't let him start freestyling, as one Vikings veteran put it. Of course, Colleen, this is Aaron Rodgers, so easier said than done. That's right, Tom. And, and I know Daniil Hunter, we heard John Gruden on the broadcast say that that's one person he would love to look like. Uh, he's got he's got a great body, according to John Gruden. It was a really weird <laughs> situation in the Monday Night Football game. Tom, thank you so much. Of course, the Vikings are going to be riding the hot hand to try and keep this guy off the field. Aaron Rodgers, his last eight games in Minnesota. Look at that footwork. The Packers are 5-3, and three, but that touchdown to interception ratio. It's Smogan, 20 touchdowns to two interceptions. Tomorrow is just his second time playing in U.S. Bank Stadium. So we'll see how that turns out tomorrow. Now, we have, uh, of course, more no news here at the top of the show. Ezekiel Elliott's six-game suspension is back on. The result of the latest court ruling is uh, very complicated right now. So that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to miss any games, but his legal team is challenging the decision, which could still keep Zeke off the field. Mike Garofolo, I'm going to need you to break oh, this down okay. uh, and, Mike, and explain no, all of this. But first, Jerry Jones on the radio yesterday <laughs> said this. 